It's time to think about colors. The first thing we can know about colors is that every color has three properties. What are those? The first one is hue or temperature. Hue is just the basic description of the color. It's red, it's green, it's blue, it's yellowish, orange, it's reddish, purple, etc. And those colors have to do with the temperature or the vibrations of the waves of light. The second property is value. Even though colors are colors, they also have a, a characteristic value that's light or dark. For example, the uh, yellow here is lighter than the purple. So value and hue. The third one is saturation. Saturation involves whether the color is pure, what we call pure or intense, which is like colors you get straight out of a tube of paint that don't have other colors mixed with them, or neutral colors, which are colors that are uh, mixed with other colors so that they become more gray or toned down or muted. So some ways of categorizing colors, the OG colors, the original primary colors are red, yellow, blue. In theory, every color can be made by combining some combination of these, primary, primary, and primary. The secondary colors are made by combining the primary colors. So red and yellow create orange. Red and blue create purple or violet, and yellow and blue create green. Primary colors and secondary colors. We can also categorize colors uh, in, according to their temperature, uh, whether they're warm or cool. Warm colors are sort of centered around orange, orange and red, and yellows. They are associated with warmth and the sun. And cool colors are centered around blue, blues, violets, blue, greens, and greens. Uh, as you go around the color wheel, it's possible to have uh, a cool violet or a warm violet or a cool green or a warmer green, depending on the amount of colors and how they're mixed. So warm colors and cool colors. Cool colors, blues, green, violets are covered, are associated with water or shade. The color temperature really depends on what color is next to it. It's kind of relative, whether it seems warm or cool. Analogous colors. Analogous colors are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. So they're next to each other. For example, these three colors have green in common. Uh, you might have colors that have blue in common. They're all next to each other, or colors that have red in common. Analogous purples, analogous reds, analogous blues, analogous greens. Analogous colors and combinations of analogous colors create a sense of harmony. You see analogous colors in interior design, in fashion design, uh, because they are pleasing to the eye, they seem to harmonize and go together. On the other end of the spectrum are complementary colors, colors that are opposite on the color wheel. For example, yellow and purple, or red and green. When you put these complementary colors together, they seem to clash. They really uh, have a strong sense of contrast and they catch your eye. They can even seem to vibrate because they are so different in temperature and wavelength. Again, intense colors, uh, colors that are pure, that only have one pigment, uh, we call them intense or pure or saturated colors like these. 
Neutral colors are made by combining complementary colors. So if you take this green and add a little bit of red to it, you get a neutral or toned down or muted green. If you keep adding more red, you get, in theory, a pure gray if you add equal amounts of red and green. Or if you add blue uh, and orange, blue and orange, or any complementary pairs of colors that are across from each other, the more you mix them, the more gray they become or muted. Some different ways of combining colors. If you take all analogous cool colors and then put one warm color, it will pop out. Here we have a group of warm neutral colors. All these colors are somewhat muted. They're all, they all have some amount of red in them, so they are warm. These are all neutral colors that have been somewhat muted, but we have an intense green here. Here are some warm analogous colors but there's one cool color, so that really pops out. Intense colors combined with one neutral color. And here we have all neutral colors that are cool that have some degree of blue in them. Another way of combining colors is what they call split complementary. So you take yellow and the complement would be purple, but you go one step to the left and one step to the right. So it's a more of a reddish purple and a bluish purple. These are different split com complementary color combinations. These again are all neutral colors with one intense color. There's so many ways you can arrange colors. Uh, it's just like taking musical instruments, trumpets, clarinets, violins, and putting them together to create uh, harmonious or clashing combinations. Abstract artists don't use representational subject matter. Their paintings don't have people or things. They're pure color. And in this sense, color is like a language that can express things in different ways that can't really be expressed in words. For our color combination assignment, we're going to be working in PowerPoint. And one thing you want to do when you're working on this project, like all your projects, is always save your work when you finish a session. Save the file, put it on your desktop or whatever, and then email it to yourself so that you won't lose your work. This is especially important if you are working in one of the uh, public computers in a lab. To do this color combination assignment, there are several steps. You're going to create a balanced composition using at least 10 shapes. You're going to color the background and all the shapes. And then you're going to copy the exact composition and paste it at least five different times. And then redo the colors on those same shapes to make these different color combinations. You want to keep all the shapes and the composition the same so that the only thing we're going to change, the only variable, is color. And we'll see how different color schemes uh, affect the mood of the piece. So start off with a blank uh, slide. When it goes to layout, just choose blank and go to the Insert menu and go to Shapes. You can use any kind of shapes you want. Triangles, which you can uh, stretch or pull any way you want. I don't know why that's not working. There it is. You should be able to change the slope of the triangle like that. And when I go to Shape fill, I'm going to pick the color and I'm going to get rid of the outline because I just want this pure color. You can send colors uh, in front of each other or behind each other. 
to use these star shapes. You can vary the uh, size by pulling on it, stretching it, but you can also vary the width here of the little spines that come out. So you want to make a balanced composition using at least 10 shapes. So I've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This square here is also a shape. And this background color, uh, I could make another shape to fill it in, or I could go to design, format background, and this will color the whole background. If you don't like something you've done, you can go back to this. So once I get my basic composition, I'm going to go over here to the left side and click on the highlighted small version of it and go to copy and paste. So I get the same exact thing, except I do need to redo the color of the background. So then to start making these different color combinations, we just keep everything just like it is, except change the color. So I want to make an analogous one. This one uses a range of oranges. So if I'm in this mode, I just go here to shape fill and make this orange and then make this one another kind of orange and on and on until I get my analogous colors. Now for each one of these you want at least 10 shapes and at least uh, four colors. So you can repeat the, sh the colors but just don't have the same color touching, uh, don't have colors touching each other. So this orange is the same as that. Okay, so what you want to wind up with is one composition that is fully analogous colors and you should label that, put in a text box here, go to insert text box and write disappeared text box. Analogous colors. So that I'll be sure to know which one it is. So this is analogous colors. These are all warm colors. They have the color yellow in common. The next one is analogous colors with one contrasting color. Again, this is a good way to create a focal point. If you look at this one, it's a pretty balanced composition. Our eye doesn't tend to go one side or the other, but when you put that blue in there, it's such a different color that our eye is really drawn to that color. Analogous colors with one contrasting color. Next, we want to make one that's all neutral colors. So if you're here, we start changing each of these colors to a neutral color, either by picking a gray or by taking that color that you're working with and pulling it down until it becomes more neutral. Remember there are warm neutral colors and cool neutral colors. You can have any combination, but they should all be neutral. Here is my example of neutral colors. We've got some neutral greens, neutral blues, some slightly warm grays, slightly cool grays, all neutral colors. The next one is neutral colors with one intense color. That would be this blue here. So this is another way to create um, a focal point. If you have one intense color, one saturated color. It's really going to pop out against all those neutral colors. The 
the next combination is primary and secondary colors. So I've got red, yellow, blue, and the secondary colors, red and yellow make orange, uh, red and blue make purple, and yellow and blue make green. So there are primary and secondary colors. And try to put these next to each other so that you get some complementary pairs like the purple and yellow or the uh, blue and orange. Again, same composition, but using primary and secondary colors. And finally, primary and secondary colors with black and white added. This is a great um, way to come up with some interesting color combinations that kind of bounce off of each other. The black and white seem to kind of intensify the way the other colors look. So once again, for this assignment, first create a balanced composition using at least 10 shapes. I would say at least four different shapes repeated. Uh, they can be different sizes. They could have it as much variety and interest as you can in your com composition. Color the background so that everything has a color. Next, you're going to copy that same composition and keep it just the same except the colors. So you copy it and paste it, going to the small version of it and hitting copy and paste. Then redo the colors on each one so you have these one, two, three, four, five, six different versions. All analogous, analogous colors with one contrasting color, all neutral colors, neutral colors with one intense color, primary and secondary colors, primary, secondary, and black and white. So when you do this, try to get into the mindset of an abstract artist, a painter maybe, who's using pure color and shape to express different feelings and emotions in some, somewhat the same way that a musical composer would combine different sounds and different pitches to create uh, a bit of instrumental music.